conversation, you know. No, obviously, <laughs> Sam, you're coming at it from an angle. You you have DJed, you have produced stuff like that, but you're involved in the music industry in, in a bit of a different way, mm. uh, which a lot of people are interested in. So, for yeah. example, what Stephen's talking about, right? You're right. A DJ can get creative in many ways with our social media, whatever it may be, right? But what about people that maybe aren't in front of the camera, that aren't the artist? What if they're really stimulated by working with agents or working with managers or working in the background and the whole industry's kind of on the shelf at the moment? What do they do? This is a, it's a really good question. Um, this is, I cannot, I cannot stress this enough. This is the, probably the greatest chance a DJ coming up is ever going to get for networking. Because once we're back on the road, <laughs> and once you're contacting your promoters, can I get a gig? If you're traveling, if you're flying to Spain or Italy to go and play at a festival, you're not going to have a chance to do the networking from your home. You'll have to rely on networking and meeting people on the road, which is a good way of doing it. But you're not going to, for anybody listening, you're not going to get a better chance than you are now to write off to the companies you've always wanted to work with. Get advice off the industry that are literally sat in their bedroom, you know. You'll be surprised at how many emails you may send. You're always going to get a few people writing back to you. This is a good opportunity to offer your services to a label, to a company, to an education center like yourselves, to colleges. You know, you've really got to think outside yeah. the box. And this is a perfect opportunity to do so. Please do not sit back and rely on just live streams. Live streams. The thing, the thing is, just to add to that, Sam, I've just been finding this interesting, like, no longer, I've been talking to record labels and stuff and the kind of the way they're looking at it is a bit different because we're now making music for streaming mm. rather than live performances. So people are still listening. There's still a need to create always, but it might not be been, being played at festivals for a, for a long time. But it's like the music's still to be made. Um, they're still selling music, they're still streaming it. People are still listening, but it's, it's just so strange now that it's not for clubs or festivals at the moment. No, I know, yeah, but at the same time, off the back of that, just just it, think of, I think Mix Mag did a, um, an article on this, and I read it a couple of weeks ago. Think of the amount of music that is great music that is getting, currently being produced in your bedroom because these artists and producers no longer have the stress of travel and it is, yeah. I travel as a job. It's, it's stressful. You know, you're on and off flights, you're, you're in the car, you're on trains, uh, you know. And think of the amount of, this, this is going back to a gal's question, this is a perfect opportunity and time to really hone your skills in at home because once this is yeah. over, you'll have learned something new. You'll have learned a different way of working. You will have contacted, say, 50 record labels or <laughs> you might be on two new promo listings You'll have contacted promoters. You'll have contacted, let's say, ADE, for example. Offer them services that you acquire. So offer the services that they acquire. And you may have even helped them in the bloody mailing listing online. And you just sat there, but you've no idea how far that will go in the future. You know, and this time that we've got, use it to the best of your abilities. 